we delve into the dark and dangerous world of organized crime as we uncover the recent arrest of Rosalinda Gonzalez Valencia, the wife of notorious drug lord Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, also known as El Mencho. Rosalinda's arrest has sent shockwaves through the criminal underworld, as she is believed to be a key player in the operations of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, CJNG, one of the most powerful and feared criminal organizations in Mexico. Family Affairs in the shadowy world of organized crime, where power and wealth intertwine, one woman has emerged as a key figure in the operations of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, CJNG. Her name is Rosalinda Gonzalez Valencia, and her story is as shocking as it is captivating. Born and bred in rural Michoacán, Rosalinda was no stranger to the dark underbelly of the drug trade. Her family, deeply entrenched in the world of organized crime, played a pivotal role in the formation of the Milenio Cartel, which later evolved into the CJNG. From an early age, Rosalinda was exposed to the dangerous and lucrative business of drug trafficking. She grew up in a family of 18 siblings and was the eldest of her sisters. Her family family originally cultivated avocados but eventually turned to marijuana and opium poppy. As she grew older, Rosalinda's involvement in the cartel became more prominent. She took on the role of overseeing the CJNG's financial and legal resources, becoming the cartel's resource and financial manager. Her astute business acumen and ruthless determination made her an invaluable asset to the organization. Rosalinda's responsibilities extended far beyond mere bookkeeping. She managed a vast network of businesses affiliated with the CJNG ensuring that the cartel's financial empire remained intact. From legitimate enterprises to money laundering operations, Rosalinda's influence stretched far and wide. But it wasn't just the financial aspect that Rosalinda oversaw. She also played a crucial role in the cartel's legal resources, ensuring that the CJNG had the best legal representation to protect its interests. Her connections and influence allowed the cartel to navigate the complex web of law enforcement and evade capture for years. Rosalinda's involvement with the CJNG made her a force to be reckoned with in the criminal underworld. Her arrest in Zapopan, Mexico, has dealt a significant blow to the financial structure of organized crime in the state of Jalisco. But the question remains, what will be the repercussions of her capture? Will the CJNG retaliate? Join us as we uncover the shocking truth behind Rosalinda's arrest and the impact it has on the criminal landscape. But before we probe further into the recent events, let's rewind and explore Rosalinda's past encounters with the law. This is not her first rodeo. Rosalinda Gonzalez Valencia is no stranger to the cold steel bars of a prison cell. In 2018, she found herself at the center of a high-profile arrest that sent shockwaves through the criminal underworld. Charged with money laundering and organized crime, Rosalinda's alleged involvement in the CJNG's illicit financial operations landed her behind bars. We are going to explore the events leading up to Rosalinda's arrest and the shocking allegations that were made against her. In June 2018, the authorities finally caught up with Rosalinda. She was arrested and charged with money laundering and organized crime, specifically for her alleged involvement in the financial operations of the CJNG. The accusations against her sent shockwaves through the criminal underworld and captivated the attention of the nation. In Puerta de Hierro, a posh neighborhood in Zapopan, Jalisco, Gonzalez was taken into custody by the Mexican Navy on the evening of May 26, 2018, just outside a 7-Eleven convenience shop. She was residing near her place of arrest in the opulent residential skyscraper Torre Aura Altitude Air which stands at a height of 563 eft. The moment Gonzalez was taken into custody was captured on camera by the authorities. When they questioned her for her identity, she gave a good response. Gonzalez acknowledged that her daughter Jessica was not with her when they subsequently asked to see her. After that, she was taken into custody by the authorities, who also informed her of the arrest warrant, the charges of money laundering, and the organized criminal connection. Gonzalez's detainers informed her that she would be transferred to the Office of the General Prosecutor, PGR, in Mexico and instructed her to hand her car keys to the friend who was with her. Gonzalez urged the person who stated she would accompany them to phone her attorney. After being apprehended, she was flown to Zapopan's Estadio Akron, a multi-purpose stadium, and then flown by helicopter to Mexico City. She was brought to the offices of Mexico's Organized Crime Investigative Agency, the Assistant Attorney General's Office for Special Investigations on Organized Crime in Mexico City, to make her legal declaration. Gonzalez was detained on May 28th at the Federal
Cultural Social Readaptation No. 16, a maximum security facility for women located in Cuatlan del Rio, Morelos. When Gonzalez was brought to the prison, a sizable security surveillance system was installed. The jail has several shortcomings, according to Mexico's National Human Rights Commission, CNDH, including a shortage of staff, inadequate health care, oversight of staff, programs and rehabilitation for prisoners, and classification of inmates. Gonzalez was given a writ of amparo and permitted to speak with her attorney by a judge just three days after her arrest. Gonzalez issued this because she believed that the PGR was denying her the opportunity to present her defense and was in breach of Articles 14, 16, and 22 of the Mexican Constitution, which lists the unconstitutionality of law enforcement, due process violations, and cruel and unusual punishment. Gonzalez's first case hearing was scheduled for May 31st at the Federal Social Readaptation Center No. 1, also called Altiplano, a maximum security prison located in the state of Mexico's Almoloya de Juarez. Gonzalez would be transported from Morelos to attend the hearing. Gonzalez's hearing was held in private on June 1, 2018, after her lawyers and the government agreed to it. The plaintiff requested that the hearing be held behind closed doors because much of the evidence presented against Gonzalez that day was also being used against the CJNG in other investigations, and they did not want it made public. Gonzalez stated that she was concerned about her physical integrity and did not want the press present during the hearing. When asked why she was afraid for her life, Gonzalez explained that the media was portraying her negatively and claiming she was a criminal. However, Rosalinda vehemently denied the charges, claiming that she was being defamed and falsely accused. Your Honor, yes, I am not a criminal, I have been defamed, she said in her defense to the judge. Her defense team argued that there was a lack of concrete evidence to support the allegations, raising doubts about the legitimacy of the case against her. The trial that followed was a high highly anticipated affair, with the media and the public eagerly awaiting the outcome. The prosecution presented a compelling case, highlighting Rosalinda's extensive ties to organized crime and her alleged role in the CJNG's financial activities. They painted a picture of a woman deeply involved in the illicit operations of one of Mexico's most powerful cartels. On the other hand, the defense team fought tooth and nail to dismantle the prosecution's case. They argued that the evidence presented was circumstantial at best and failed to establish Rosalinda's direct involvement involvement in the alleged crimes. They questioned the credibility of the witnesses and sought to cast doubt on the motives behind the accusations. The judge upheld the decision and ordered the journalist and her family to leave the courtroom. The hearing started at 1 p.m. and lasted about 12 hours. During the hearing, the judge determined that the plaintiff's evidence accusing Gonzalez of money laundering was sufficient. Her organized crime involvement charge was dismissed after the judge determined that the evidence presented was insufficient to link her directly to the CGNG. Her time in custody was short-lived. Rosalinda managed to secure her release on bail worth $1.5 million. The judge ruled that there was a lack of evidence to support the charges against her, granting her freedom once again. It seemed like she had evaded justice, leaving many wondering if she was truly untouchable. But the story doesn't end there. Rumors began to swirl about Rosalinda's declining health and a terminal illness that she was allegedly battling. Some speculated that her release was due to her fragile state and the lack of specialized medical attention she required. These rumors rumors only added to the air of mystery surrounding her. Fast forward to the present day, and Rosalinda's fate has taken another dramatic turn. In November 2021, she was recaptured by the Mexican military, once again finding herself on the wrong side of the law. The details surrounding her arrest and the charges against her remain shrouded in secrecy, leaving us to wonder what new evidence has emerged. As we delve deeper into the shocking events surrounding Rosalinda's arrest, we can't help but wonder about the impact it will have on her alleged declining health. Will she receive the medical attention? attention she needs, or will her health deteriorate further behind bars? The answers to these questions remain unknown, adding another layer of intrigue to an already captivating story. With Rosalinda back in custody, the criminal landscape is once again left to ponder the fate of the CJNG. Will her arrest weaken the cartel's grip on power, or will the CJNG retaliate with a vengeance? Join us as we uncover the truth behind Rosalinda's arrest and the shocking revelations that lie ahead. The arrest of Rosalinda Gonzalez Valencia has sent shockwaves through the criminal underworld, leaving the Jalisco New Generation cartel teetering on the edge of chaos. As the wife of Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, also known as El Mencho, Rosalinda's capture is seen as a significant blow to the CJNG's financial structure and operations. The CJNG, alongside the Sinaloa cartel, has long been regarded as one of the most powerful and feared criminal organizations in Mexico. Led by El Mencho, a former policeman, the CJNG has risen to prominence under his leadership, evading capture and mass masterminding a criminal empire that spans five continents. The CJNG's reach
reach extends far beyond Mexico's borders. The cartel has been blamed for smuggling vast quantities of drugs, including the deadly synthetic opioid fentanyl, into the United States. The devastating consequences of this illicit trade have been felt across the nation, with overdose deaths linked to fentanyl spiking to over 93,000 in 2020, according to U.S. data. With Rosalinda's arrest, the CJNG faces a critical juncture. The loss of their financial and legal manager leaves a void that will not be easily filled. The cartel's intricate network of businesses and money laundering operations now hangs in the balance, potentially disrupting their illicit operations and crippling their financial resources. However, the arrest of a high-ranking cartel member like Rosalinda does not come without risks. Mexican officials are concerned that her capture could provoke a violent reaction from the CJNG. The cartel is known for its ruthless tactics and has been involved in numerous acts of violence, including targeted assassinations and brutal turf wars. In a separate incident, two Marines were reportedly abducted in Zapopan, the same city where Rosalinda was arrested. The Mexican government fears that her capture could be the catalyst for a wave of violent reprisals by the CJNG as they seek to protect their interests and send a message to their rivals and law enforcement. As the dust settles and the CJNG assesses the impact of Rosalinda's arrest, the criminal landscape braces for what may come next. Will the CJNG retaliate with a vengeance, unleashing a wave of violence, or will they be forced to regroup and adapt to the new reality? Only time will tell. Behind every famous cartel queen is a cartel king. How did this queen meet her king? And how did this criminal union blossom? Let's meet El Mencho. El Mencho's Humble Beginnings before we dive into the depths of the criminal empire of one of the most feared and elusive drug lords in history, El Mencho, we must first understand the humble beginnings that shaped his path to power. Born Ruben Oseguera Cervantes in the poverty-stricken city of Aguilila, Michoacán, El Mencho's early life was marked by struggle and hardship. Growing up in a modest home, he witnessed the influence of drug cartels in his community and experienced the harsh realities of poverty. However, his determination to create a better life for himself led him on a journey that would ultimately transform him him into a powerful cartel leader. In the poverty-stricken city of Aguililla, Michoacán, a young boy named Ruben Oseguera Cervantes was born on July 17, 1966. Little did anyone know that this humble child would grow up to become one of the most feared and powerful drug lords in the world, El Mencho. Aguililla, a small farming city in western Mexico, was known for its avocado farms. But behind the idyllic facade, the influence of drug cartels loomed large. Poverty was a harsh reality for many families, including the Oseguera Cervantes family. Ruben, as he was known in his early years, grew up in a modest home with his parents and siblings. His parents worked as farm laborers, toiling day in and day out to make ends meet. The struggles of poverty were a constant presence in Ruben's life, shaping his worldview and fueling his desire for a better future. The presence of drug cartels was an undeniable reality in Aguililla. The allure of quick money and power drew many young individuals into the criminal world. Ruben, too, was exposed to the influence of these cartels from a young age. As he navigated the streets of Aguililla, Ruben witnessed the operations of drug cartels firsthand. He saw the power they wielded, the fear they instilled, and the wealth they accumulated. These experiences would later play a significant role in shaping his path. As Ruben grew older, he adopted the name Nemesio, possibly to honor his godfather. Over time, the name Nemesio was shortened to El Mencho, a nickname that would become synonymous with his rise to power in the criminal underworld. El Mencho's early life was marked by the harsh realities of his surroundings. The poverty he experienced, coupled with the influence of drug cartels, created a volatile environment that would shape his future choices. Despite the challenges he faced, El Mencho was determined to break free from the cycle of poverty. He saw the drug cartels as a means to escape his circumstances and create a better life for himself and his family. But little did he know that his journey would take him down a dark and dangerous path. His ambitions would lead him to cross borders, engage in illegal activities, and ultimately establish his criminal empire. At the age of 19, El Mencho along with his brother and other friends and family, made the fateful decision to immigrate illegally to the United States. They settled in the San Francisco Bay Area, using it as a home base while they attempted to establish a drug trafficking business. El Mencho's time in the United States was not without its challenges. He was caught selling drugs in San Francisco in the 1980s and 1990s, leading to his arrest and subsequent imprisonment. After serving four years behind bars, 
he was deported back to Mexico. The experiences El Mencho had in the United States, both the successes and the setbacks would shape his understanding of the criminal world and lay the groundwork for his future endeavors. Upon his return to Mexico, El Mencho's involvement in the criminal world intensified. He became associated with the Milenio Cartel, a powerful criminal organization operating in the region. It was within the ranks of this cartel that El Mencho would rise to power and eventually establish his empire. After returning to Mexico from the United States, El Mencho had a story that spanned different criminal organizations. Before founding the infamous Jalisco New Generation Cartel, CJNG, El Mencho worked for the Milenio Cartel, an entrenched criminal organization operating since at least the early 1990s. El Mencho's journey from a police officer to a hitman for the Milenio Cartel is nothing short of sensational. His skills as a sicario, or assassin, led him to become a cartel lieutenant, inspiring loyalty among his team of assassins. El Mencho and his team targeted members of the Los Zetas Cartel, earning the nickname Los Matazetas or Zeta Killers, and he quickly proved his worth and rose through the ranks, expecting to be rewarded with a top position within the cartel. However, fate had other plans. When some of the cartel's leaders were arrested or killed in 2008 and 2009, El Mencho and his brothers-in-law, who headed Los Quinas, found themselves overlooked for promotion. This rejection would prove to be a turning point in El Mencho's life. In a pivotal time in cartel history known as the Resistance, El Mencho, with the financial backing of his brothers-in-law, orchestrated a deadly coup. They split the Milenio Cartel into two factions, those loyal to El Mencho and those against him. Through a series of strategic moves and acts of violence, El Mencho emerged as the victor in early 2011. With his new cartel, the CJNG, he had officially launched his ambitious plan to lead the world's dominant drug trafficking organization. New Generation Boss the CJNG quickly gained a reputation for its brutality and dominance. El Mencho's leadership style was marked by extreme acts of violence, including acid baths, decapitations, and even cannibalism. These gruesome acts were often documented and shared on social media, instilling fear and compliance among rival criminal groups and security forces. El Mencho's rise to power was fueled by his discipline and strategic thinking. Unlike some cartel leaders, he abstained from drugs and alcohol, avoiding the pitfalls that often led to their downfall. He maintained maintained a strict exercise regimen, staying in peak physical condition to evade capture. With his iron grip on the CJ Eng, El Mencho expanded his control over key drug trafficking routes and hubs in Mexico. His cartel dominated much of Guadalajara, the country's second largest city, and controlled the outskirts of the state of Jalisco, as well as other states such as Colima and Michoacán. The CJ Eng's presence extended far beyond Mexico's borders. It spread to the majority of the country's 32 states, with an increasing presence in Tijuana and Mexico. Mexico City. El Mencho's empire reached international proportions, with operations and connections spanning across the globe. Narrator. As the boss of the CJNG, El Mencho set the piso, or tax, that business owners and independent drug traffickers had to pay the capos for protection. He also assumed control of corrupt police officers and politicians, further solidifying his power and influence. El Mencho's ambition and thirst for power knew no bounds. He was driven by a desire to establish the CNG as the world's dominant drug trafficker trafficking organization, surpassing even the infamous Sinaloa cartel led by Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. Today, El Mencho remains one of the most wanted criminals in both Mexico and the United States. He is believed to be hiding in rural areas of Jalisco, Michoacán, Nayarit, or Colima, guarded by mercenaries with military training. Despite unconfirmed reports of his death, authorities deny these claims, and El Mencho continues to evade capture. The rise of El Mencho and the CJNG is a story that defies belief. From his humble beginnings in Aguililla, to his ascent to power within the Milenio Cartel and the founding of his own criminal empire, El Mencho's journey is a testament to the dark allure of the criminal underworld. Throughout his life, El Mencho faced adversity, witnessed the influence of drug cartels, and experienced the harsh realities of poverty. These experiences shaped his path and fueled his ambition to create a better life for himself. However, his pursuit of power and wealth led him down a dangerous and violent path, leaving a trail of destruction in his wake. El Mencho's leadership and strategy strategic vision propelled the CJNG to unprecedented heights. With a focus on methamphetamine, a highly profitable drug, the cartel quickly established trafficking routes in dozens of countries across six continents. Their operations spanned half of Mexico, including the states of Jalisco, Michoacán, Zacatecas, Guanajuato, and Nayarit. The CJNG's aggressive expansion didn't stop at Mexico's borders. They extended their reach to Central America, the United States, Australia, South America, and even Europe. By targeting lucrative foreign markets in Europe and Asia, 
the cartel has maintained a low profile in the United States while amassing a staggering estimated war chest of $20 billion. The CJNG's rapid rise and global reach have made them one of the most ubiquitous cartels in Mexico. In fact, Mexico's Attorney General declared them the most dominant cartel in the country. Their specialization in methamphetamine, with its higher profit margins compared to cocaine or heroin, has contributed to their immense wealth and power. But what sets the CJNG apart from other cartels is their aggressive natura and willingness to use extreme violence to maintain control. Their brutal tactics include torture, decapitations, and dismemberments, shocking even the most seasoned law enforcement officials. The CJNG's push for territory has led to a surge in violence, with thousands of murders attributed to their aggressive tactics. States like Veracruz, where the cartel has been most aggressive, have become known as giant graves due to the discovery of vast burial sites. Despite efforts by law enforcement agencies to combat the CJNG, including military-led operations and the arrest of K members, the cartel continues to pose a significant threat to Mexico's national security. Their involvement in various criminal activities, including drug trafficking, arms trafficking, human trafficking, murder, kidnapping, and extortion, makes them a formidable criminal organization. The CJNG's dominance and influence have grown over the years, solidifying its position as one of the most powerful drug cartels in Mexico. Their strict hitman training program and militarized operations have allowed them to maintain control over their territories and expand their operations to other states. However, recent reports suggest that the CJNG may be facing internal divisions and infighting. Some former members have defected and formed their own criminal organizations, potentially weakening the cartel's power. Law enforcement efforts to dismantle the CJNG have resulted in the capture or killing of several high-ranking members, indicating a potential shift in the balance of power. Despite these challenges, the CJNG remains a major player in Mexico's drug trafficking landscape. Their violent tactics and territorial disputes continue to contribute to the ongoing violence and instability in the country. The CJNG has gained a reputation for its extreme violence and brutal tactics, shocking even the most hardened individuals. Their acts of brutality have left a trail of destruction and fear in their wake. One of the most notorious events attributed to the CJNG is the Veracruz Massacre. In 2011, the cartel declared war on other Mexican cartels and targeted the city of Veracruz. In a horrifying display of power, 35 bound and tortured bodies were dumped in the streets during the evening rush hour. This act sent Shokwavas throughout the country, highlighting the CJNG's willingness to commit heinous acts to assert their dominance. The Veracruz massacre was just one example of the CJNG's brutal nature. Two years later, they committed another shocking act of violence in Guadalajara, known as the Sinaloa Massacre. In this incident, 26 bodies were discovered, further solidifying the CJNG's reputation as a ruthless and dangerous criminal organization. The CJNG's aggression wasn't limited to Mexico alone. In a brazen attack on foreign soil, the cartel was responsible for the bombing of the American consulate. This act of terrorism sent shockwaves through the international community, highlighting the CJNG's audacity and disregard for borders. These key events, the Veracruz massacre, the Sinaloa massacre, and the bombing of the American consulate serve as chilling reminders of the CJNG's brutality and aggressive nature. Their willingness to commit acts of extreme violence has solidified their position as one of the most dangerous cartels of all time. The CJNG's brutal nature and involvement in shocking events have left a lasting impact on Mexico and the international community. Their reign of terror continues to contribute to the ever-growing violence and instability in Mexico. As we conclude this video, it is important to recognize the ongoing challenges posed by the CJNG and the need for continued efforts to combat their criminal activities. The story of Rosalinda, El Mencho, and the CJNG serves as a chilling reminder of the dark underbelly of the cartel world and the lengths some will go to maintain power. If this video sent chills down your spine, check out our other awesome videos on the channel detailing organized crime, mafia, and prisons. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.